Hello and welcome to today's session. My name is Ken Moraduri. I'm a GMAT trainer with the International Scholars Program. So today we'll be looking at uh, study plan and some of the tips that you should consider when crafting a study plan. Um, we know that uh, study plan is an important part or tool in your GMAT study because it kind of provides you with a roadmap on how you will tackle the studies. And we know this is important because there is a lot of content to cover in GMAT and you really have to break down and uh, set up your path before you start um, preparing for GMAT. So um, the first uh, tip is to know the major testing areas and this applies to all the areas of the, the, the section. So quantitative prison, verbal reason, and data insights. So this, of course, will help you um, know where to concentrate on, and then know the other areas that you, you really just have to maybe prepare, but not as intensely as these major areas. So for quantitative reasoning, we have algebra and number theory constituting about 70% of the quantitative uh, reasoning section. And you'll also find that um, algebra and number theory overlap. And some of the concepts in algebra, they actually borrow or build on the concepts from number theory. So it's always recommended that you start with number theory first and then go on to algebra. Once you're done with these two sections, you know you are kind of good with quite a chunk of quantitative reasoning. And then you can go on to the rest of the topics like combinatorics, probability, um, statistics, uh, and all those. So for critical reasoning, this is one of the sections in verbal reasoning. Because of course, verbal reasoning, we have reading comprehension and critical reasoning. For critical reasoning, we have this for question types, they constitute about uh, 60 to 70% of the critical reasoning section. And the other question types, about five of them, have similarities to these four. So once you perfect these four question types, you know you've got like two thirds of critical reasoning um, in the bag. And then you can now build on the knowledge that you have to take care of the other question types. So remember, this is just critical reasoning for reading comprehension. Um, there's no um, uh, specific uh, question type that frequency, but um, for tips on reading comprehension, you can go ahead and look at our other videos where we um, go into detail of how to handle reading comprehension. For data insights, um, we have uh, data sufficiency, which covers about 20 to 30% of data insights. So I know 20 to 30% may look uh, like a small percentage, but remember that data insights has about six uh, question types. So having 20 to 30% in one of the question types is actually a, a huge part. So because we have data sufficiency, and then we have two part analysis, multi multi source reasoning. We have um, table analysis, we have graphical interpretation. So, of all those, data sufficiency um, always seems to be to cover the majority of our data insights. And then, um, tip number two always ensure that you put quality over quantity. We have um, a YouTube video that also goes into detail um, of how to prioritize quality of a quantity. But just to uh, point, to give a few pointers. One, you should always start with content limit timing. So you can imagine a situation where you are struggling to maybe solve questions in under two minutes, but you are not uh, that conversant with the content. So you do not know exactly how to solve this question before starting um, dealing with the time. So the best approach is you 
grasp the content and make sure that you understand how to use it. Make sure that you can actually solve the question if it comes. And then after you're confident of solving the question, you can now try now finding ways to solve it faster. So always go over content first and then when you are good with the content, you can now start handling uh, the timing aspect of solving the questions. Then number two, start with easy questions and then go on to hard questions. So, of course, first of all, easy questions are the building blocks to the difficult questions. So, you probably not have the ability to solve, to solve the hard questions without first tackling the simple questions. And then number two, easy questions are very important in the exam because missing easy questions has a profound effect on your score downward. So missing actually a number of easy questions can tank your score. So we always ensure that even if you can solve medium and hard questions, make sure that you do not uh, miss the easy questions. And then consistency of intermittent study. So this means that if say you want to study for seven hours a week, it's better to study one hour each day as opposed to keep just studying for one day for seven hours. So that consistency will also keep your mind active, will keep the content that you revise or read fresh, as opposed to just having a one week gap every week, then trying not to refresh your mind of whatever you learned last week and two weeks ago at the same day. So try to find time, maybe each day, even if it's a few minutes and then the main part of your study is on the weekend, that's okay. But just make sure that you're consistently um, putting in some time to your studies every day. Then tip number three, um, this regards verbal reasoning. So four tips uh, we've talked about them, so I'm just mentioning. Number one, always use process of elimination. Because for verbal reasoning, sometimes we're not looking for the only correct answer, we're looking for the best answer. You will see these in the questions a friend. Second of all, always use official guide questions for practice because of the quality of the questions. It's impossible to find high quality questions, verbal questions that are not official guide questions. So please stick to official guide questions for practice. And then number three, for reading comprehension, the most important thing is your reading culture. So the best way to prepare for reading comprehension is actually uh, building a reading culture. So just start um, reading newspapers, reading articles, things that are written in perfect English. Sometimes the, the more elegant the writing, the better. So if you can, um, if you can set academic channels or writing, you can do that. It will improve your comprehension ability because that's the important part in reading comprehension. Then for critical reasoning, it's targeted practice. So one, understanding the question. So uh, what exactly is the question asking you? And then number two, um, attention to detail, knowing exactly what the author is saying. So understanding your stimulus, understanding your, your question then, and also understanding the answer choice and what is required um, of you in that specific question. So practice and practice and practice makes perfect. And this targeted practice will both help in your ability to solve critical reason questions, reading comprehension questions, and data access questions. You are watching Success with Bob Muiti Show, presented to you by the Kenya Airlift Program. The Kenya Airlift Program is an award-winning education financing scheme that helps bright Kenyan students to pursue graduate studies in North America regardless of their financial background. You can find our programs by going to www.kenyaairliftprogram.com. The Kenya Airlift Program, empowering dreams. Number four, data insights. So for data insights, first of all, just um, study the content from bubble and part first. Do not start with data insights because data insights is just a combination of the concepts of the two from bubble and quant. 
So it doesn't make sense to start with data insights from that. So make sure that you're good in the verbal and front content first so that you can go to data insights because you'll find sometimes that those two are combined in a single question. Then number two, when you're doing data sufficiency, just um, try to do it um, hand in hand when you're doing quality content because data sufficiency is wholly based on uh, quantitative reason concepts. So uh, for ease, you can try to uh, do both of them at once. So when you're done with the quant content, you can also start trying to solve data efficiency questions. And then multi-source reasoning is very similar to reading comprehension because you have more than one question associated with this, um, the information that you have. Also, you have a lot of information similar to how we have Trading comprehension having a lot of information. Then there's just a small bit of quant. So again, if you perfect trading comprehension, you'll be okay with multi-source reason. Number four, um, critical reasoning. Um, if you are good at critical reasoning, you will be good with uh, two-part analysis questions. So it's not as high percentage as multi-source reason. Probably maybe like 50-50 between critical reasoning and quantitative reasoning um, concepts. So by that, you will have majority of the data insights facts um, covered. Our fifth tip for today is to make sure to keep an error log. So tracking your progress is very important. Uh, knowing that um, I couldn't solve a question last week, but today can solve it comfortably. Knowing that maybe a certain section, maybe say quantitative reasoning, I have a problem in um, a certain topic. And then um, just tracking your progress through that topic, and then knowing when you are good with that topic. So tracking your progress is really, really important. And the good thing is you do not have to come up with an error log all on this or all by yourself. Um, there are some resources out there that will help you with your error log and inputting. As long as, of course, you use um, the system that they have well. So we're going to detail on how to use error logs in our training sessions. So once you join, you will um, know how to use this to your advantage. And then number six, use mocks as a study guide after content. So first of all is um, perfecting your content. And then once you feel that you have enough content and a strategies, GMAT strategies under your belt, you can now start using mocks. So mocks one, they help you track your progress or how far you are into your studies and if uh, how you're studying is efficient. And then number two gives a guide on how you would perform in the exam if you were to do the exam right now. And then three kind of gives a roadmap to how you should continue studying. So after every mock, you should actually use the mock as a guide to so for where should I put in more effort? Where am I going from? So on. We also have, again, a full video dedicated to mocks, so you can go and check that out. And then number seven, and the last one, put exams on the one ready. So please avoid the temptation of kind of um, estimating that you'll be done with your studies in maybe two months, and then booking the exam before you start your studies, because of course, um, everyone is different and the time that we need to study for the exam varies uh, from individual to individual. So just um, put in your work, put in your time, uh, study, and then when you are ready, and that will be, um, you will know that by how you're performing in mocks and consistently. So you have to perform um, how you want to perform in the exam consistently in your mocks, when you are at that point, it's the only time that you should put it on. So 
these are some of the very essential study plan tips. So you can use these tips when coming up with a study plan. And um, to go into detail on how exactly to uh, do this, and also to go into detail yeah, on the different topics and different sections, uh, please check out um, our website and join our general training uh, for more. So thank you very much for uh, your time and listening to this session. And I'll see you in our next uh, video. Bye. You have been watching Success with Bob Mwiti Show, brought to you by the Kenya Airlift Program. Come back again next time to learn concepts, tools, strategies, and resources on the path of becoming a successful immigrant in North America through real life experiences. Be sure to subscribe to the Kenya Airlift Program YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn.